have one more story I brought, and it's a really important one to me personally. And it's a censorship one, and it's 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 a persecution one. And it's our friend, CJ Hopkins. Um he like I said a couple of weeks ago, I haven't issued or decided or looked at indie media awards yet for 2024 or for 2023, you know, come out with any thank you new updates for this year. But CJ Hopkins and Gordon Dimack are certainly two top, top level candidates who almost certainly will be getting them this year. Um Indie Media Awards, baby. Indiemediaawards.com. Thank you. So <laughs> What happened? <laughs> DJ, the road to totalitarianism. And I love that word, but I can't say it. Italian. Hey, everybody. We're, we're high. It's Sunday night. It's late. We've all smoked a bunch of bongs. Uh, so, like, I now think of, I know, go- I'm now thinking of totalitarianism. We're like, we're gonna uh, slur Italian we're gonna toes. slur through some shit sometimes, and that's <laughs> that, and and that's okay, all right. So yeah, turtleism. Good that's morning. right. That's right, Sean Miller. Turtleism is morning. exactly right. Good morning, Sean. Yeah, look, we got two talent. Mama Mush, Mama Mouth no, is our, is our fucking speaker of the house. She well, not anymore, but she's a minority leader <laughs> or was. Um. Anyway, T.J. Hopkins, the road to totalitarianism. What happened here? Well, we've been talking about C.J. Hopkins and covering what's been happening to C.J. Hopkins. And this was over at his Consent Factory Inc. website, consentfactory.org. He also publishes this published this over at his Substack. The reason why I wanted to include it here is because it actually has the book cover and in, in question that all of this controversy is around. And he says, so the Germans are putting me on trial for my thought crimes, and apparently I've been found guilty and sentenced. Bear with me and I'll try to explain. This is literally like Kafka and the Metamorphosis, so you'll hear this. The Berlin District Court has issued a so-called penalty order or order of punishment in which I am advised that I am now officially a criminal in Germany for tweeting two tweets. According to my attorney, a trial will now be scheduled at which my attorney will argue the case before the judge that just issued the order of punishment. At this trial, the judge will listen attentively to the arguments my attorneys already made in writing consider them carefully, and find me guilty again. Then, the judge will reaffirm the order of punishment. Go ahead and read that paragraph again. I'll wait. No, I won't. I'm going to jail! After my Kafkaesque trial has concluded, my attorney will file a series of appeals which will fail, at which point I will have to decide whether to pay a fine of 3,600 euro or go to German prison for 60 days. I think we covered that it's a couple the weeks old ago. days. Well, still, this That's, process. I mean, they might as well. They might as well throw nine more on there. You know. I'll throw you in jail for sixty-nine days, bro. Sorry, no. <laughs> this process will take yeah. months, if not years, and will cost <laughs> CJ God knows how much money in attorneys' fees, court costs, and then the thirty-six hundred euro fine. Yes, he's going to pay the fine. He's not going to German prison for 60 days. Life's too short. He's getting older, and he really wouldn't accomplish anything except making a narcissistic spectacle of himself. However, what will accomplish something, I don't know how much, but something, is if I see the whole process through to the end and shine as much light on it as I possibly can, because my case is just one of many such cases, and the real story here is not about me. It's about the crackdown on political dissent that's being carried out, not just here in Germany, but also in other countries throughout the West. We've been covering that. There are not many outlets reporting. There are not many outlets reporting this story, not outlets with any significant reach. And raised right here as one of those. If you are reading this column, you're probably aware of various alternative media outlets that are, that are, but most of these outlets are quarantined off where normal people never have to see them and are delegitimized as unreliable sources and purveyors of misinformation and so on. There are a few bigger sources covering the story, which are also increasingly being branded illegitimate. Matt Taibbi's Racket News, Michael Schellenberger's Public, Glenn Greenwald's Locals Operations, and I'm sure I'm forgetting a few more, forgive me. 
Yeah, like this one. I'm just kidding, CJ. I love you. I'm just kidding. You are fake news. The point is, unless you are a charter member of the science-denying, conspiracy-theorizing, hate-speech-speaking, anti-vaxxing, misinforming, left-or-right extremist club, i.e. people Bound who read... Well, people, <laughs> people who read weird malinformationist publications like The Gray Zone, Off Guardian, Zero Hedge, Dissident Voice, and Unlimited Hangout, all of which we featured on this show, by the way, <laughs> and who are planning to vote for oh, Bobby... the next sentence... And and who no, are no, potentially wrong. voting, well, who are potentially planning to vote for Booby Kennedy, or God help them, Donald Trump. You probably Don't have no I, You probably have no idea what I mean when I refer to the crackdown on dissent, on dissent. Or you do, and you think it's just honky dory. <laughs> I love that he said honky dory. <laughs> I don't mince words. The folks who think it's honky dory are totalitarians. They're fascists. They applaud the crackdown on dissent. They applaud the criminalization no, Italian of dissent. Italians, you mean? No, they're not Italian. They're totalitarian. <laughs> mm -hmm. well, no Italianarians. Well, I, I did. I, they did it. They did elect <laughs> a, a a hard right fascist. I I hear that that the, 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 the lady. Um, yep. They applaud the censorship of political speech of any speech they do not agree with. They want their political opponents in prison. Julian Assange. They want everyone who disagrees with them punished. Political opponents in prison. Donald Trump, by the way. They want people who offend them canceled. They want anyone who refuses to conform to their official ideology erased. I've been calling these people totalitarians and fascists for a number of years now. I do not enjoy that. I'm not doing it gratuitously. <laughs> Some of these people were my friends. I'm doing that. Calling these people fascists and comparing the nation totalitarian, totalitarianism that is erupting all throughout the West to other earlier totalitarian systems like Stalinism, sorry, Marxist friends, and yes, to fucking Nazi Germany, because despite the fact that there are numerous differences, a lot of it is textbook totalitarianism. Naked textbook totalitarianism. There isn't another nicer word for it or for those who are enthusiastically embracing it. There's, there's a lot of worse words for it you could use, and I'm down with those. Well, he says, I'm not no. going <clears> to <throat> present the evidence for that assertion again. I've done that ad nauseum, much of it in my latest book, which is banned by Amazon in several countries, and which bears a warning on other Amazon sites to <laughs> visit the WHO, the CDC, or your local national health authority for the latest information on COVID-19 and vaccines before you consider buying it, and the cover art of which is about to make me an official hate criminal with a criminal record. That's right, as I explained at, at greater length in a previous column, the pretext for this so-called hate crime prosecution is two tweets that I tweeted almost exactly one year ago for the cover art of that very same book, which just happens to document the rollout of the new normal, i.e. the new totalitarianism in 2020 and 2021. Here are the two tweets that constitute his hate crimes. Here are my hate crimes, right. Here are my hate crimes. Coronavirus! Mm -hmm. The one on the left reads, quote, the masks are ideological conformity symbols. That is all they are. That is all they ever have been. Stop acting like they have ever been anything else or get used to wearing them. And guess what they're trying to do is put them back on, everybody. It reads, yeah. this, the other one is, on the right is a quote by Karl Lauterbach, who is the Minister of Health of Germany. It reads, quote, the masks always send out a signal. The image is the cover art of my book. And it is a surgical mask, a cloth paper surgical mask with a swastika a very it's very hard to see but in the middle of it you can see a swastika emblem wow incredible okay say what you want about me and my writing i can be provocative and some of my political satire is bombastically over the top but as my taibi put it in a recent racket news piece which we read on this show i believe last week no amount of drugs they exists. call me mr bombastic Oh, that's not what he said? 
No, they said he he said no amount of drugs exist <laughs> that if I consume would allow a rational person to conclude that the writing of C.J. Hopkins furthers the aims of a former National Socialist organization. Agree with him or not, and I increasingly do, he used his imagery to compare the sweeping declarations of emergency power that were common around the world during the pandemic, and were particularly authoritarian in Germany, to Nazi tactics. And that is what I am being accused of and punished for doing by the German authorities, oh. i.e. furthering the aims of a national socialist organization, basically promoting Nazism for tweeting these two tweets above. What? <laughs> right. What? Oh, no, no more symbols. Straight to jail for you. There is no Straight complex jail. legal. There is no complex legal issue here. Yes, <laughs> swastikas are banned in Germany if you're a Nazi or promoting Nazism or fascism. But they are permitted for purposes of civic education, countering anti-constitutional anti activities, which, by the way, Nazism would be. Art, science would certainly fall under art, research and education, coverage of historic and current events, which it also would fall under, and similar purposes according to the German law. There's literally like four applications that you could apply to this book. Do you seriously believe this that This is no longer in the zeitgeist, no. Yes. It's not nice. <laughs> GoFundMe, by Stay the way, jail. Bad, bad Cookies, who, by the way, just said that GoFundMe is the new American healthcare. GoFundMe, by the way, just froze the Gray Zones account. Uh, yeah. and, and is not allowing them to get the hundred thousand dollars that they just raised to hire new reporters because somebody somewhere decided that they were to, to ask a question about something and now all of a sudden go you know it's the government doesn't like that they're reporting on all the which is not the first the time that that's happened not even close they did this to mid press well. they've done this to the Canadian truckers they've done this over and over again right like maybe we should not use that maybe yeah. it's time. Yeah, maybe it's time to to, you know, to ditch GoFundMe and tell everyone to do the same. Not that not that they should be allowed to do this to anyone, even right. if you are a jerk, Wyatt. Uh, you know. Yeah. Anyway, and and let's stop moving toward um, digital money so they can't debank you. They can't they they can take all your cash and seize all your cash, but it's a whole lot harder for them to do that than to go and seize your and, and, and to cut off access to your bank accounts digitally. Unfortunately. If we can save the banks, if then we can save the world. Y yes, read the script, Greta. The world. <laughs> uh huh. Okay, so they understand that they're not complete imbeciles. Well, they are, but they they know the charges are just a pretext, and they know that the that that we know that the charges are just a pretext. They don't care. They don't have to. They don't even have to pretend they to be following the rules. They know that we know that we know that they know. That's right. Not anymore, because they know that the majority of the masses are with them. Point of prosecutions like this, uh, and much more serious and significant prosecutions like that of Julian Assange, for example, free Julian Assange, is to send a message. The naked disregard for the rule of law, the blatant absurdity of the charges, the open contempt for democratic principles is all part of the message. It's not a message about the law. It's a message about compliance. It's about compliance. It's about power. Who has it and who doesn't? And what happens to those who refuse to bow down to it? The message is not intended for me or for more important figures like Julian Assange or for many other less well-known dissidents that are being made examples of currently. We're just the medium that conveys the message. We're the delivery service. The message is for you. I'm pretty, delivery service. And I'm pretty sure you're getting the message. <clears throat> the, the question is, how are you going to respond? And I don't mean by storming your capital. Please don't go out and get yourself shot. I mean, are you going to help shine a light on where we're headed? Because it's pretty fucking dark. Join me. Join him. Folks are offering to send him money to help with his legal costs, and he's extremely grateful because we're going to need it. And here's how to do that. But I think we need to, what we need to do is a little harder and costs more and is much more important. We need to talk to the totalitarians. Yes, the ones who wanted to put us in camps. If we can't get through to them, we're probably screwed. And there is a window of opportunity to do that now. It's not 2020 or 2021. The mass hysteria has worn off for a lot of people. Yes, but the, the fear-mongering machine is already understanding that and is already starting to whip that fear back into a frenzy, CJ. I know not all of them, but for some of them, a lot of them. 
Some of them are finally reachable. Take a chance. Talk to them. The ones you know or, or used to know. Try to get through to them. Not the bug-eyed, fanatical, foaming-at-the-mouth types who can't wait for the return of the emergency measures, or the ones that were literally, like, dancing in the streets with glee at a fucking fake mugshot, quote-unquote. How the hell do you have a mugshot when you're wearing a tie? I've never seen a mugshot in a tie in my life. Also, mugshots, don't they need, like, this bit? Like, you gotta have the, this. Like, you can't have a mugshot without... Right. This thing, you know, like you need the little placard with your new jail number on it, you know? So like the other ones, you know, you know, the ones I mean, the ones who want out, you can see it in their eyes. Take a chance. Talk mm -hmm. to these people. Totalitarianism, fascism. It's not an identity. It's a mindset. No one is born a fascist. People can be deprogrammed. Some of them can. And at this point, we all need to help. We need all the help we can get. Yeah, we do. So. It's your arraignment number, according to Bad Cookies. Yes, that's that's right. So, if you're yeah. one of the kind and generous folks who have been asking what you can do to help and offering to send me money, sure, go ahead and send me the money. Thank you. I've been overwhelmed by your messages, yep. and I'm sorry that I can't personally respond to all of them. I'm one of the people that reached out to me almost immediately and said, where can I send you some money? But also consider what I'm suggesting. If you can possibly bring yourself to do it, talk to the normies. If you can't, I completely understand. Trust me. I'm still just as angry as you are. I'm hurt. I feel betrayed and abandoned. I have a feeling that some of you feel that way too. So I know what I'm asking when I'm asking you to talk to the new normal totalitarians, the ones who might be reachable. But if you can't yet, don't. But if you're able to, try. Don't try to convince them that you were right and that they were wrong. Just shine a light on the road we're on. Try to get them to recognize where we're headed, regardless of who was right and who was wrong about whatever. We're all going down this road together. Personally, I'd not ride it all the way to the end and face what's down there this time. And certainly not face it alone. One of the ways that I read somewhere that DJ may actually run into tax issues in Germany if you just donate him money directly. So one of the great ways to support him is either to subscribe to his Substack or to purchase his best-selling book, book on Amazon. So that's why I'm showcasing it here. Go buy CJ Hopkins' book. Please support him. Uh, I love this man. I don't even know him, and I love him. CJ fights for us. There's no doubt about it. That guy fights for us, and I'll stand up for him all day long. Oh, man. All got right. you, homie. Yeah, I got you. You bet. Um. Oh, so one other thing that I wanted to showcase here with CJ is he did put out a Substack article with the details of his legal defense fund and how to donate to it. So to get things going, Catherine Austin Fitz, who you may already know, she offered, generously offered to match the first 500 in donations, which they long since cleared. Bobby Kennedy, Booby wants to kick in. Don't tell anyone he's getting demonetized enough, as does Matt Taibbi, and I'm extremely grateful. He expects that he's going to need to raise somewhere between somewhere at maximum about 25,000 euros. That guesstimate is based on lengthy and ultimately unsuccessful battle in the German courts. Some are telling him this could go all the way to the Supreme Court, the Bunder Bundesverfagenstur. Yeah. Wunder Wunderkort. Wunderkort. Um, um. There's a chance I could prevail, yeah, but that. the way things are going, it seems pretty clear that the German authorities are determined to make an example of me, the rule of law be damned. My intention is to shine as much light as possible on their abuse of state power along the way, because my case is just one of numerous examples of the naked crackdown <laughs> and dissent that's being conducted, not just here in Germany, but in other countries throughout the West. Also, Alina Lip, by the way. I love, I love how the word for their Supreme naked. Court literally has the fash, fash, fashion... Like, yeah, like fascist. Bundes yes. or fashion Gishkrieg. Right? Yep. So that's why he's setting up like this that. legal defense German. fund. All right. I've been hesitant to do this because, well, I have a problem asking for money. <laughs> you and me both, pal. As in, I don't like to do yeah. it. Give but, me uh, your fucking money! But I've been deeply moved by all the readers who have been asking where they can send donations and otherwise expressing their support. 
more than I probably let on as I generally try not to get too emotional in public. Oh, and one more thing, then I'll give you information. If you're just getting by or struggling financially, and I will I will repeat this for myself as well as for CJ. If you are getting just getting by or struggling financially, please don't send me your money. I run my Substack on a free or paid subscription basis because I know that many of my regular readers can't afford a paid subscription, and I have faith that readers who can afford one will voluntarily pay for one. That model has been working well so far, at least for him. For me, I've got one. Spalding Show, Walter, I love you, man. Thank you so much, really. You're the best. We've got a few Patreon supporters. Go. We have a few Patreon supporters, uh, both at IndieLeft.news, you know, at Patreon.com slash IndieLeftNews and at Patreon.com slash IndieNewsNetwork. We have a few subscribers at our YouTube channel. I'm grateful for all of you. Seriously, man. That's it's it's great. Thank you. Nikki. Yep. I think Nikki's still a, a subscriber over at the Patreon. Um, really, uh, everyone that supports us. And if you can't, just share it, like it, tell everybody you know about it. That's all I ask. But the same logic applies to this legal defense fund. If you can't afford to donate, there are other ways to help out. Spreading the word about my case and other cases like it. Paying attention to and speaking out against the state and corporate censorship that's intensifying all over the world. Recommending CJ Substack, books, etc. If you could afford to donate, thank you. And then here's the information to do that. PayPal, sub Substack, buy the book. That's it for now. Any other means, if any other means, donating become available. And he forgot to mention to buy the book because that's also one way to do it. Um, so. Look at this distinguished gentleman. I wanted to. Look at the way he is sitting, yeah. I wanted to put, I wanted to also show this comment that he pinned. So this has been up for 40 minutes and I'm getting flooded with emails expressing support. I'm going to have to pin a blanket. Thank you up here to the top of the comments because I'm not going to be able to write back to everyone. Please note that I'm reading your emails and your replies here and they're making me cry. You make us cry sometimes too, CJ. Thank you. Please don't tell anyone about that. Yeah. Sorry, secrets out. I have an image of the cynical political satirist to maintain. Seriously, though, my heartfelt thanks to all of you. Also, if you send me an email, please do not include attachments. I delete such emails with extreme prejudice. And later on that night, he put a postscript. I'm really overwhelmed by anyone, by everyone's just generosity and support. Thank you. Also, I know some are having trouble with international bank transfers because their banks want my home address, and I can't share that publicly, obviously. So he's working on a solution to that, and he'll keep you posted here and update the original post when he gets to the court. <clears throat> so I put in a thing about how we stand with them and I'll, I commented on that as well. CJ Hopkins dot subject substack dot com. CJ Hopkins dot substack dot com or consentfactory.org are the best ways to support CJ. Hook him up. That man is awesome. All right. Um, yeah, we got through it. That wasn't too bad. Oh yo, oh yo, oh, Uncle Roger's in the house. Niece and nephew. Uncle What's happening? Roger. What's so happening, so nephew? Sorry. Yep. <sighs> Simply fantastic reef. Yes. Uh, what do we got here? Who looks deeply? No, that way. was about. That was about <laughs> Mr. Bombastic. Ah, yes. Which, well. Yeah. Fuck go find me. Fantastic. Jordan Deck, yep. They uh, they exist uh, only on profiteering off of desperation, mainly around medical expenses. If we had anything resembling Medicare for all, GoFundMe would be bankrupt. They're a middleman. Absolutely, man. 100%. GoFundMe is the, is the American healthcare plan, like Bad Cookie said earlier. Um, and yeah, bogus about the, the gray zone. Give them support as well. Um, Go subscribe to the Gray Zone Patreon, but I'm guessing that at some point government will come after Patreon too and tell them to stop some supporting the Gray Zone and stop accepting money. So then you'll have to go to the Gray Zone Substack, which they'll have to activate through Stripe, and who knows if Stripe will allow them to to bank through that. I mean, it's it's really a problem when they're trying to make it incredibly difficult for news outlets that that report on corruption and on um, NATO imperialism to be able to get paid and and funded by their by their users and by their readers. Um, 
it kills them because it's the one model they can't really beat unless they take away your ability to bank. Like, literally, that's the only thing they can do. Otherwise, they can't get between you and your audience. By the way, this is what they're going to try to do to Tucker Carlson. This is what they're going to try to do to everybody that's going to speak out against the establishment at any point. 